Hi, I'm Philip from Reamped, and today we're going to look into making the Darth Wharf lightsaber. Bad lab. First of all, I need some inspirational pictures, since I wanted to get the shape as close as possible to Worf's Betleth. Once that's done, we'll change to 3ds Max and make sure the units are set properly. Before actually using the template of the Betleth, I tried to get a rough estimate of the size. Therefore, we'll just use some standard cylinder objects and a bounding box with the size that I believe to work for me. By the way, these videos are always a quick look on how I work. For detailed explanations, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get into more detail with the next video. Now in the next step I go ahead and start to model the connecting parts for the lightsaber blades, as well as the emitters according to my initial sketches. Again, I like to use some standard geometry and work my way from there. Especially with simple shapes like this, I feel this is the best way to go. And just like for the dark ray saber, cylindrical shapes are a good start. After deleting the cap of the cylinder, we can now select the open edges and then by holding the shift key and clicking and dragging the left mouse button, we can easily extrude the edges with either the move, rotate or scale tool. This makes it especially easy to model the cylindrical emitters and add a bit of detail. Each of the emitters will have a slightly different shape due to the angle for mounting the actual lightsaber blades. For flat objects on the other hand that might be laser cut or produced with a CNC router later on, I prefer to use splines. For one part since it's easy to draw some dynamic shapes and for the second part that I can directly export the splines as a vector file for the laser cutter. Another advantage is that I can simply adjust those objects by using the BC handles. To get a feel for the finished object, we then simply add a shell or bevel modifier and adjust the offset to fit the material we have in mind of using for the build. From this point onward, it's mostly the same procedures all over and just up to my subjective feeling of what would work fine. It's often a back and forth of finding the right angles, moving around objects to find good proportions. But as I said, that is just according to my feeling what looks good. By the way, if you want to adjust a part that is already aligned in a way that makes it difficult to use the move tool in one axis, then simply clone the object as an instance and rotate it back into its original position. This way, you can now make adjustments to the splines or meshes and directly see the outcome of your changes on the aligned object as well. As for the grips, I at first made a rough dummy to see how the entire Betleth would look like. But since this is a custom build anyway, I decided to go forward with a bit more detailed design. I then came up with a twisted grip. And to achieve this, we simply add a twist modifier to a standard cylinder. Then we select always two edges and leave out one and using the loop button, we quickly have a row of edges that we can then offset with the scale tool. Now, this cylinder still looks rough, but we'll add another modifier right away. However, before doing that, we quickly adjust the smoothing groups by assigning each second row a different group. Then, in the modifier list, we select Turbo Smooth and enable the option of using the smoothing groups. On top of that, I like to use another Turbo Smooth, which then gives us a nice rounded edge. We can then make some more adjustments for the grips and in general for the Batleth, which is again just the same procedure overall. And since this is going to be a real prop, we have to make all the connections that each part will fit into. Therefore, I am using Boolean operations. And I know, I know, I wouldn't normally advise to use Boolean operations in 3ds Max. However, since a 
this is a quick build and B, every single 3D printed part has to be refined anyway, I don't mind using it. But I still suggest that you keep a version of your model before using the boolean operations. It's destroying the overall mesh topology and collapses your modifier list. If I would need to continue and texture and maybe animate this model, I would definitely not use boolean operations, but rather already prepare clean objects with a proper mesh topology. And yeah, boolean operations are also not really stable. Well, only half an hour of work or so lost, so let's try again. Quickly adjust all the parts again, push some vertices, move some objects and then boolean... No, first save. Now finish up all the parts with the boolean operations and voila, the model is finished so far. In the next step we will 3D print the parts and then continue with actually building the saber battle. I still have a lightsaber blade lying around in the workshop, so the only thing I have to get are the rounded or pointed tips. Not sure yet which ones I'll go with. But all of that you will see in the next prop building video. Hey, you've reached the end of our video, unbelievable. This was one of our first videos on this channel and if you enjoyed what you saw then stay tuned for more. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, then just leave a comment below and we're going to answer. We're going to answer. We're going to answer as soon as possible. Again, Baba. Yeah. He is not really